Hi, I'm Lovingly Lissa, and this is Block One for Quilt Concert 2023, Twinkle Twinkle. This is the pinwheel block that we are working on today. Let's get started. When paper piecing, it's good to have some good tools on hand. One would be your rotary cutter and a cutting mat. A second one would be an add a quarter ruler. This is an add a quarter ruler plus. It helps me fold my paper on my line and it has a good quarter inch measure right here um, on the end and I'll show you how I use this. Of course, you could use a piece of cardstock and a regular ruler if you would like, but this is a handy dandy tool to have. And from Sew Tights, there is a Sew Light Magnet that is not as a strong magnet as their regular Sew Tights. So it doesn't hurt when I use it on the sewing machine. And I'll show you how I use this to hold my pieces together. And last but not least, you will need to print out your patterns. I do just use regular copy paper to print out my patterns, my templates. This is for block one, which is the pinwheel block, and you need to print two of these to create the whole block. The first thing you do when you print these out is to take a ruler and make sure you measure up to that one inch guide. That way you know your templates are printed to the correct size. You're also going to want to have a good pair of paper scissors to cut out your templates. Remember, don't use your fabric scissors to cut paper. When I cut it out, I do stay away from my actual cutting line just because I like to have a little extra to cut on the end. So I will not cut that directly off. And I will cut around. Now I'll cut the side off as well because I don't need that much hanging. And we'll move this away. And here is my first template. We will be starting with template A from the block one. And I have cut out, according to the rough cuts, our fabric A piece, which is going to go here, and our fabric E piece, which is going to go here for sp steps one and two. If you have another way of cutting out for your method of paper piecing, go for it. Uh, I'm just focusing on what we have in our pattern so that new paper piecers can learn, and this is a great way. First, I'm going to do is take the out of quarter ruler and lay it right on that line, which is our stitch line between section one and two. And fold the paper back and give it a good crease, just like that. Now I am going to take the piece I cut for section one, and you can see how that covers all of section one, just like that. But I'm going to put the paper on top. Now, if you are using a print fabric, this first fabric number for step one, whenever you're paper piecing, this should always be the wrong side. That's only for step one, for piece one, okay? I have a solid, so to me it really doesn't matter which side is up. But for a printed fabric, you're gonna to wanna to make sure. Now, piece two, I'm folding the paper back, and I'm looking at, you can probably see the line through the paper. And what I would like to do is lay this on top of my step two fabric, which is fabric E, holding that paper down. Now, if you're using a printed fabric, this is going to be right side up, right side down. This is right side down. This is right side up so that when you're sewing together, they're right sides together. All right. I can see my line and you can hold this up to a light, but I can see it pretty well here with this light. And I see my stitch lines all fall within the fabric. And I can see here, it's going to be within the fabric. And then I, holding this tight, I'm going to fold it back open. Now, I don't want this to move while I'm carrying it over to my machine. 
So this is where the sew tight comes in handy. I take the magnet on the bottom and I slide it under everything. And I take the magne magnet top and I click it right there. It's a very light one. It won't get caught on the machine bed because it's not a heavy magnet and it should not interfere with your computer systems if you have that. I've used it on mine with no problems. So I'm gonna take it to my machine and I am gonna stitch from this, the end of this line to the end of this line. Now I take one to two extra stitches to go over that line, but not very many. And I make my stitch length much smaller. Uh, depends on your machine. I usually do a 1.5 on my machines. I, I don't know what your machine is gonna do, but you do want a smaller stitch length when you sew from here to here. Here is my line all stitched up. And if you'd like to, you can pull the other fabric back, your fabric too, and if you hold it up to a light, you will see that it covers all of the lines where you're gonna be stitching and your seam allowance. So yes, if you have a good light, or um, I know there are some light boards that you can use that have cutting tables on top of it. I just hold mine up to the ceiling light to look at it. So I'm gonna lay that back down. And I'm going to take my add a fourth ruler. Just give that a quick fold back. I'm gonna flip my add a quarter ruler over because there's a little little ledge on the side that will butt right up against that paper. And I have a nice quarter inch line right here that I can cut. And here we go. I've cut that. And now, you can see how that will work. And what I'm going to do now is just take my little Oliso iron and just give that a press. I like this little iron whenever I'm paper piecing because I have a small table that I keep right next to my machine. And no steam, because I don't like to um, use steam on paper piecing. I think it makes my paper wet. and It makes, makes things a mess if you have a wet paper and all that. Um, that Oliso gets very hot, so I like to give it one second at least to cool down. But it's all nice pressed open. And right sides would be on here. This would be your right side of your print fabric and this would be the right side of your print fabric. So, I'll put this back over here. Turning it back over, we're now gonna go from step two to step three. Step three hatching is for our fabric A. And I've cut the piece according to the directions. Just like that. It's gonna go here. So, once again, using my out of quarter ruler on the stitch line. I'm gonna fold this back. Now it can be hard to see where to line up your next fabric because of this overhang. And I will cut that off at a quarter inch or you can just fold that back like that if you're wanting to save a step. So we'll fold that back. I'm gonna line this up here so there's about a quarter inch overhang. And when I flip this over, I just check, does that line, if you can see the line and the line that point, there's still fabric under it. If I come down to here, it's kind of close. And since there's room on the upside, I'm just gonna pull that further down. And let's see. Yep, there's fabric under that edge and there's fabric under that edge. And there's still about a quarter inch hanging off there for my seam allowance. Open it back up. And once again, I'm going to very carefully, I know it looks like I'm being rough with it, but I'm just kind of used to holding fabric like this now. Put my sew tight there and I can feel it on the line, which is fine. I'll just take it off when I'm sewing like a pin and put this side here. And now I'm gonna sew from one stitch above that line all the way down to one stitch below this line. 
here's my stitching line. And if I flip this over and you hold it up to a light, but you can pretty much see that it's covering all my stitching area. So I'm going to fold this back and use my quarter inch seam allowance ruler, my add a quarter ruler, to trim all the excess fabric off. Then I will bring over my iron. and press that piece over. And we're going to repeat the same steps. Turn this over, we're going to piece four, which is our fabric C. And in my, this is it. So again, we're gonna use the add a quarter ruler, fold it back. Fold this fabric back so we can see where the stitch line is so that we can leave a quarter inch overhang. Now, let's see. I know that we're very close to the edge here and actually I can see this, I wanna keep that straight because when it was, when I made it even like this, that whole corner came off my fabric underneath and we do not want that. So, I'm gonna put it like this and I can see it's on the fabric, on the fabric, on the fabric and it's on the fabric all the way over there. Hold this up to the light. That's the best advice I can give you. I'm going to slide my magnet underneath so I can move it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch from that edge to this edge. My stitch line, fold it back. But the uh, ledge on, ledge of the ruler up against the paper, trim, discard. and press. And that is one, two, three, four pieces of fabric already attached. I believe there's only one more and it is Fabric A, one of our squares. I have it right there. So, take our ruler, fold the paper back, fold the fabric back, lay this on the square. You're gonna wanna make sure, again, always double check to make sure this paper that's folded over is covering all the new fabric. And your new fabric piece, if you're using a print, should be right side up, because this is gonna be right side down and right sides together, okay? And then I'm going to slide my magnet underneath. And I'm going to stitch from right up here, straight down to right there. Just like one stitch over. My stitch line is done. I'm going to trim the pieces. I'm going to press it open.
and there is the block. Now it doesn't look like much of a block yet because there is still one more thing we have to do. Our next step is to trim the block. And our trim line is this outside line that you'll find on the templates. It's a quarter inch away from all our stitching. So I line up. Ooh, look at that glare. I did not know that was gonna happen. I'm gonna line up the fat, um, ruler. So I have that quarter inch overhang. I'm gonna cut right on that line. Now, your rotary blade. I use a regular rotary blade for this part because I know I'm cutting through paper and you really shouldn't, but my paper rotary blade won't get through that fabric. So I don't have much of a choice. I'll be replacing my blade after I finish paper piecing anyway. Um, and I usually do wind up having to replace my blades after paper piecing for that reason. But yeah, my, I do have another rotary cutter that I use specifically for cutting paper, but it's, it gets dull that I, so dull that I, I can't get through my fabrics at all. Okay, sorry about the glare with the ruler. This is a Quilter Select ruler. I've started to collect these um, as my older rulers wear out. It has a great non-slip on it. I know, obviously, you're watching a video and can't feel it, but the bottom side, it just there's no slipping. Like, yeah, see, it made my whole mat move. So this is a pretty awesome ruler. I love the Quilter Select rulers. And as um, my rulers wear out, which they, you know, the markings do, I've been replacing them with the Quilter Select. So, get rid of this piece of paper. Now, that looks more like a clean, beautiful block. So we've made one. You actually have to make four. There are two on each of the templates. This one will make exactly what we just made. And remember, it does mirror image, which is why it looks like that, because it mirror images when you turn it over. Now, the big difference of these blocks, these templates, is that you're using different fabrics. This is fabrics B and C, so watch, because you have two of each, okay? And so you're gonna make four all together, two with the fabric B and two with the fabric C. All right, we have finished all four of these blocks. Here's number one. And here's number two, this is going to go this direction. Oh, got some threads there. Don't worry about it. The color is going to be opposite each other. And our final one will go here. We've got this great pinwheel block. Now you're going to stitch this one to this one and this one to this one. And it's easy enough. We do want to match that point to this point. And how I do that is I take a pin, I put it through this point, and I make it sure it comes out. Can you see the other side? Let's see. I'm trying to do it and hold it to the camera and I can't do four things at once. There we go, comes out that side. And then I just kind of push them together. I make sure my needle is straight up and down, my pin is straight up and down like that. I should lower that. There we go. Make sure all my raw edges are together. Make sure my pin is straight up and down because then I will take a pin to right before that spot and a pin right after that spot to hold it in place and take that one out. And now I'm going to stitch down this line. And you can start all the way off the paper if you want. You don't have to go to the point to point. You can go all the way if you like. All right, so I'm gonna do that to this block and I'm going to do it to these two blocks. All right, I have stitched on this line and if you open it, you'll see my beautiful, beautiful points and matching seams. This is, the pinning is how I do it. You can use the sewed light that I was using earlier on. Um, you can use Wonder Clips. There's different ways to holding that together to match. I have always found that that pinning system that I use has worked really well for me. 
So now, before I press anything, I do like to pop this off, just these edge pieces of the paper so that I can get a cleaner press. Okay, I'll do that on both sides and I'm going to press one seam allowance in one direction and the other seam allowance in the other direction so that I can create a nesting seam when I put these two together. And when I put these two together, I am also going to pin my points and I will just clip the seam, um, the nest right there. That's easy enough to nest, but these points, I like to pin them. All right, I've just finished pressing these. They wanted to press away from this blue because of the, um, the seam allowance there has a little bump. So it just naturally wanted to go the other way, so which is what I did. I had removed the papers from the seam allowance just to give it a flatter press. But now I'm going to match them up this way. And where this nests, just like that, I'm just gonna put a clip there, because that works. But now for this point, just like I did earlier, push it through the very tip there. Oh, and it came out exactly where I wanted it there. So I'll hold that up straight. Pin it in front of that spot and pin it behind that spot. And I'm going to repeat that for this one as well. And I will do my stitching all the way across. I've zoomed up a bit so you can get a look at the whole block. Great matching seams here, great points from the pinning and the clipping. It looks wonderful and plus paper piecing just does wonders for that. I'd like to show you the back. These are the seams that I have already pressed. This is the one I've just stitched. I have not pressed it yet. I've just removed that paper. But if you follow, so this seam was pressed in this direction, you bring this one down here, this seam was pressed in this direction, and this seam just lays up, you get this great little match here, and it lays so flat. It's called spinning your seam. So that is what I did. I am going to get my little ironing doohickey there and my aliso and just press. And now you've got a wonderful spun seam. Can you see that? Really cool. And this is pinwheel block one for the quilt concert 2023 twinkle twinkle now for the rest of the papers i do leave them inside the block until i'm ready to put the whole quilt together and this is just to help protect your fabric because you never know which one of these edges might wind up being a bias edge and uh, while you're finishing the quilt and working on other projects that could stretch and distort. So I do leave these papers in until the very last minute um, before I take them out to help keep my block nice and square. If you are a beginner paper piecer, here is a bit of advice that I used when I first started. I had a note card just like this that I had taped to the front of my machine. Fold, we folded the paper back along the stitch line so we can place our fabrics. Stitch, we stitched on the stitch line. Cut, we trimmed that quarter inch seam allowance. Press, we pressed our pieces and then we went back to the beginning for the next step. So create yourself a little note card like this, stick it where you can see it and just follow that order. I found it really helpful when I began paper piecing. Mm -hmm.